Anabali, Canadian Federation. She is uh, a luck for all of us. And uh, the position of the Canadian Federation in, uh, on a shadow report on non-state torture is very important for all of us. So, Jeanne, it's a pleasure to listen to you. Uh, merci. Um, first, I five want minutes. To, five minutes. Okay. First, I want to uh, say that non-state actor torture is often a new word for people. So I'd like to start explaining that. After all that means, it's a UN language that says the person who's doing a specific act. So you can be a good actor or a bad actor, and right now we're talking about torture, so I put them in the category of bad actors. And non-state means that they're not police, they're not military, it means that they're a human trafficker, it means that the, your neighbor, the pedophile, your husband, partner, uh, parents, and we know that this is happening more and more. So what happened in 2011, uh, the Canadian Federation of University Women decided to put a policy in Canada around criminalizing non-state actor torture. Because in Canada, if you're tortured by a non-state actor, a private individual, a person cannot go into court and claim that legal right to be heard for being a torture victim. So in 2011, the CFUW decided to, um, like I said, uh, make a policy. And then what we did, the next year, we made a shadow report and we sent that to the, oh, that, okay. We, we sent a shadow report to the Committee Against Torture. Now, we did that on the two fundamental bases, that if women are human beings and they have all human rights, as stated in the Charter of the UN, that men and women are equal, women and men are equal, and that the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, and we're saying that women and all human rights belong to women, Article 5 of the UN, um, Declaration on Human Rights says no one shall be subjected to torture. So either we belong in that category of no one or we don't exist. So I'm saying we should claim for the first time at least that no one, we should claim that, that right, that we belong there. So the Committee uh, Against Torture, uh, when we sent our shadow report to the committee, um, Linda and my colleague over there, we sat in the room and thought, well, we're, we're breaking new ground. We knew that. So we weren't sure exactly what the outcome uh, was going to be. So we listened. We, we talked to the committee members. As an NGO, you have a right to have two minutes to say something to them. So we presented our fundamental principle that women and children and girls, in this case, have the right not to be subjected to acts of torture. So they heard us, and then you have to go and you have to leave, uh, and then you have to listen to your country. So Canada came in and told the committee that they didn't believe the committee should listen to acts of violence that were tortured. And they were pretty definite, our government was, about saying to the committee, you shouldn't be doing this. So Linda and I sat there and wondered what the committee would say. And I think we were more shocked by the committee because they came back and told our country very definitely that they were being discriminatory. Yeah. That <laughs> Article 5 belongs to women and girls and to all people, of course, and that they were being discriminatory by what they were saying. So uh, Linda and I kind of pinched ourselves and said, are we really hearing this? And of course we were. And the committee suggested to Canada that Canada should change its national law to cover non-state actor torture. But of course, we have the dilemma that what the committee says is not legally binding. Mm -hmm. So Canada can ignore it. But the thing is, we have to know that it's very important that our voice is there because we can use this. The fact that we got support, that CFUW got support to say, yes, you're on the right track, you're doing the right thing, that you have to keep pushing. Because you have to remember, the Committee Against Torture only started generalizing the um, Convention Against Torture in 2007. So it's 
pretty new in its evolution. So if we want to genderize and claim the right not to be subjected to torture, I'm inviting all of you to kind of look at your country laws and see if they, if they are genderized, see if children are being protected, see if women are being protected when they come across manifestations that are gender-based forms of torture. And what happened uh, when we did our shadow report, there's general comment number uh, two, paragraph 18. That came about in 2007. And that said very carefully that not state actors. I have one minute. And then uh, in December of uh, this past year, they had general comment number three that says families uh, can be tortured, that families can be perpetrators. So they opened it even further. So if we want to make sure that we're included and no one shall be subjected to torture, please join us. And uh, I've written a paper and sent it to Anne to make a resource. Uh, we can put it on our website. Maybe the Canadian Federation can put that, or we can, uh, we can get in touch with